Uh, for those of you that are watching online here, my name is Rich. I'm the lead pastor of New Life Fellowship Church, and I am thrilled that you've chosen to join us wherever you're watching from all over this city, all over this country, uh, all over this world. I'm thrilled that you're with us. And the first thing I wanted to say, particularly to our New Life congregation, is uh, I miss you. Uh, I really miss you. Uh, I came across a passage of scripture this morning from the Apostle Paul in, first, in Philippians 1.8, where he says, God can testify how I long for you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And that passage of scripture has taken new meaning for me because I long for us to uh, be joined together again. I miss the sound of our voices joined together in praise I miss the shaking of hands and the hugs in the lobby, the praying for one another. I miss serving communion to you and receiving uh, goldfish crackers from kids uh, in the lobby before they head out. Uh, we are in a new world, living in a new reality. And yet at the same time, we have to hold on to the truth that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, in this moment, I'm paying attention to my own sense of grief, my own sense of loss, and I'm holding on to the truth that even though that might be true, uh, Jesus is Lord, and he's making all things new. And so today, all throughout this city, all throughout this country, Christians are gathering together to call upon the name of the Lord in our living rooms, in our kitchens, wherever we find ourselves, and I am grateful for this technology I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful that I get to preach this gospel to you. Now, obviously, you're not here in this room, uh, but I'm going to preach like you're all here in this room. And so if there's something that resonates in your soul as I preach, I give you permission to say amen. And whether I could hear it or not, it's all good for me. I'm okay without any kind of response. I'm used to preaching without any kind of response. I preach to the shampoo, I preach to the soap, I preach as I'm driving, I preach as I'm walking, I'll amen myself. But if there's something that resonates in your soul, just say aloud, uh, amen. And so uh, we've been in a series focusing on humility, but today we're going to take a break from that series because I wanna give you what I believe is a pastoral message in light of this new reality that we find ourselves in with the coronavirus. And so I want to give you a, a passage of scripture and I want to uh, preach it to you. And also I want to share how we as a congregation are looking to adapt to this new reality. Our text is found in Psalm 57. And Myrna Rodin actually shared this verse with our pastoral team this past Tuesday at our pastoral staff meeting. And when she read one of the verses, it so pierced my heart. And I thought, that's the message for this Sunday. That's God's word for us. And so I spent the rest of this week just unpacking and reflecting on these verses, the first five verses uh, in Psalm 57. And my title for today's message is, is coronavirus, or not coronavirus, cultivating present in a world of social distancing. It has to do with coronavirus, but it's cultivating presence in a world of social distancing. I have two titles, actually, not just this one. My second title is Until... The disaster has passed until the disaster has passed. And so I want to read you the first five verses out of Psalm 57, beginning at verse number one. Hear the word of the Lord. You can follow on the screen with me. It says, have mercy on me, my God, have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God most high, to God who vindicates me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. And it continues. I am in the midst of lions. I am forced to dwell among ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Let's pray together. Lord, we open ourselves to you in this moment. 
and ask that your kingdom would come, your will would be done. Lord, help us to remain focused over the next few minutes, that we would hear your word spoken to us at the deepest part of our beings. And so come, Holy Spirit, meet us wherever we find ourselves. And may Jesus be glorified in this moment. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. I was in the laundry room in the lower level of our apartment complex this past week. It was my turn to do the laundry. And as I was placing clothes in the dryer, I couldn't help but feel like someone was looking at me. I looked over to my right as I was putting clothes in the dryer and saw a man staring at me as if he wanted to have a conversation. He was a short white man in his 70s and I greeted him and he greeted me back. I asked his name and he said, it's Peter. And I asked him how he was handling everything. And after a moment of pause, he very simply said, I'm terrified. He said, I have COPD. I have a bad case of asthma. If I get infected, I'm in big trouble. He would go on to tell me all the things he cannot do any longer. The places that he used to love going to, but realizes I can't go there anymore. And he made a statement towards the end of our conversation. He said, I just wish this thing would pass. And many of you are saying the same thing. I just wish this thing would pass. By the end of our three-minute conversation, I told him I would pray for him. I told him that God was with him, and I told him to wash his hands. I gave him a three-point sermon. I'll pray for you. God is with you, and wash your hands. And like my new friend Peter, many of us are wondering the same thing. When will this thing pass? And the answer is, we don't really know. And yet it is in these moments when our Christian faith is really to shine. You see, Christianity never promises the absence of suffering. Christianity promises the presence of God in the midst of our suffering. And I want you to hold on to that deep in your soul. Christianity never promises the absence of suffering. Christianity promises the presence of God in the midst of this suffering. When will this pass? I don't know. You don't know. But I do know that God is with us. And David knew that as well. And that's what we see in this text today. The book of Psalms is the prayer book for the people of God. And for the formation of our souls, the Psalms are important, which is why we should be reading and praying the Psalms on a regular basis. Eugene Peterson has said it this way. He said, if we wish to develop in the life of faith, to mature in our humanity, and to glorify God with our entire heart, the Psalms are necessary. We cannot bypass the Psalms. They are God's gift to train us in prayer that is comprehensive and honest. The book of Psalms gives us language that captures the spectrum of human existence, the spectrum of human emotion. And the words of the Psalms are to become our words as we offer them to God. The Psalm speaks of our universal experiences that all of us share. And in many of the Psalms, there are three different movements. We see David talking about three different movements, and the three different movements are at such. Walter Brueggemann says it this way. There are orientation, disorientation, and reorientation. Those are three words that describe really most of the Psalms. That it starts off okay, and then disorientation comes. And for many of us, these three words really describe our collective experience. Just a few weeks ago, we were experiencing normalcy. We were going wherever we wanted to go, eating wherever we want to eat, playing wherever we want to play. We were in a stage of orientation. But now this orientation has hit us, hit us personally, hit our businesses, hit our families. And we are in a moment where we don't 
know exactly what's going on. And we long for a day where reorientation will come, where we will experience God's consolation, God's comfort, God's peace. This is the pattern for our lives. And in Psalm 57, David gives us a clue as to the disorientation that he is experiencing. David, in this text, is on the run. And right under the chapter 57 and most of our Bibles, there's an inscription that gives us the context as to why he's writing this chapter. He's on the run. He's looking over his shoulder because Saul, his, his boss, is after him to try to kill him. And everywhere David looks, he's anxious because at any moment he can be found. And so he's mindful of his actions. He's careful about what he touches. He's mindful about where he goes. David has to wash his hands 20 times a day for 20 seconds each day. And when I read this text, I felt like David as well. Because everywhere I look, it seems as if I have to look over my shoulder. This is the nature of things in this country because of this coronavirus. We are always, it seems, on high alert, always concerned about where we're going and what we are touching. We are on high alert. David is on high alert, and so because he's on high alert, he prays for God's mercy. In verse number one, he says these words, have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. And I don't know about you, but this has been my prayer every day for God's mercy. Mercy over our city. Mercy over the elderly. Mercy over doctors. Mercy over the sick. Mercy over small businesses. Mercy over the leadership in this country. Mercy. And David needs mercy because he found himself in a situation that lingered. He didn't know when it would end. It lingered. And in verse 4, he says these words. He says, I am in the midst of lions. I am forced to dwell among ravenous beasts. Men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. David had to dwell among ravenous beasts. Now, when I read that passage, I thought we might not be dwelling among ravenous beasts, but we are certainly dwelling among ravenous children who want to eat something every 20 minutes, it seems. And so whether we are surrounded by ravenous beasts or ravenous children, David has a word for us. And this is what he says. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings. And hear the word, until the disaster has passed. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. David writes this psalm in the middle of a storm. And know what he doesn't say. He doesn't say, I will take refuge in you because the disaster has passed. Doesn't say that. Nor does he say, when the disaster has passed, I will stop taking refuge in you. As if, God, thank you for the blessings. I don't need to do this thing any longer. No, no, no. He's holding on to God. In the midst of a crisis, in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a disaster. And this will continue even after disaster has passed. This would characterize his life. Now at this point of his writing, David didn't know when the disaster was going to pass. And I find that that's an important word for you and for me. Because David was in a situation in which the problem lingered. And we have a lingering problem as well. As you well know, the coronavirus situation is lingering. And we pray that it will come to an end fast. We pray that these things would be resolved very quickly. We are all feeling the effects of it, and it's lingering. Life has changed as we know it. Our favorite sports teams, 
Broadway shows, our favorite places to get a meal are all at this moment out of our reach. Many of our families now are homeschooling. We are in a new reality. And to give you a sense of our experience here as a home, Rosie and I, we are homeschooling our children. This is a picture of me here uh, just adjusting to this new reality that we find ourselves in. And so the challenge is the uncertainty of the end. When will it stop? We don't know. When will things return to normal? We don't know. When will our kids go back to school? We don't know. There's lots that we don't know, but this is what we do know. We know that no matter what social distancing measures we have to take, God is never distant. We are under God's wings. And the great image that David gives us is one of being under his wings, taking refuge under his wings. And the image is one of, a, of little chicks under the wings of their mother. And this is an image that we've been showing our children this past week. As we've been at dinner, just a verse that has come to mind, holding on to the truth that we are under God's wings. This past week, we read an excerpt from Sally Lloyd-Jones in one of her, her books on this passage. And this is what she says. And we've been reading this to our children. Are you ever afraid? Do what baby chicks do. At the first sign of danger, if there's a storm coming or a hawk hovering, a mother hen spreads out her wings and clucks to her babies. And they run straight under her feathers. We have a heavenly father who says he loves us and cares for us like that. When we are afraid, he tells us to run to him. We can nestle up under his wings and he will protect us. Hear the truth of this verse. No matter what storm we find ourselves in, we are under God's wings. You might be uncertain of your health, but you are under God's wings. Uncertain about your employment, but you are under God's wings. Uncertain about your small business, but you are under God's wings. Uncertain about your future, but hear the word, you are under God's wings. We've been hearing this past week that we are to shelter in place. And it's an important word and it's something we all must do. But I don't just want to shelter in place. I just don't want to shelter in place. I want to take shelter in God as well. I want to do like David said in Psalm 91, that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God and him who I will trust. We have a refuge in God. And we are invited in this moment, amen, to find our refuge in the one who is over us, hovering over us, watching over us. He is our refuge. You see, Christianity doesn't promise that when you come to Christ, all things will go, all your problems will go away. Not at all. But Christianity promises that even though it be dark, Light and life is still possible. That you can still experience abundant joy and peace in the midst of an environment that's marked by anxiety because you can find your refuge in God. We are under his wings and we are called to take refuge in him. Amen. And so David says, I am, I am a, I'm in an environment that's marked by anxiety, but I will not allow the environment to mark my life. I will find refuge in God. And that's the invitation for us to hide under his wings until the disaster has passed and beyond the disaster passing. We are to find refuge in his wings. Now, what does this mean for us as a people? How do we live this out in the world? And it is at this moment where I want to offer a few invitations for us as the people of God. For Christians who are watching all over this country, all over this world, this is a word for you. And most specifically, this is a word for our congregation at New Life Fellowship Church. 
What does it mean that we are to be under God's wings, recognizing God's presence in our midst? Very simply, it means that we are called to have and cultivate meaningful connection in this moment. And that's my pastoral word for us in this season. That phrase, meaningful connection. That we would be meaningfully, meaningfully connected to God, meaningfully connected to ourselves, and meaningfully connected to others. If we are under God's presence and, and finding refuge in him, we are now to offer that to the world around us and to receive it as a gift ourselves. What does it mean to cultivate this kind of meaningful connection? I want to offer a few invitations and then we'll pray. The first invitation is that we are to be meaningfully connected to God. In this moment, we are inundated with all kinds of news, inundated with all kinds of posts on social media. And I'm grateful for the connection we've experienced on social media. And at the same time, I'm keenly aware of some of the information that is posted that often brings about a sense of anxiety. And the truth of our lives is we find ourselves, and I find myself watching way too much news. I want to be informed like everyone else. I want to read the articles like everyone else. And then there's a line that I cross where I realize I'm not just being informed. Now I'm being dominated by this. And it is in this moment where we are to cultivate a relationship with God. And my hope for us is that we would cultivate times with God in prayer and in silence and in scripture. That God would deepen us in this moment to be a people that's marked by calling upon his name. As Pastor Matt mentioned, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm leading at noon a, a midday prayer to keep us connected together. And you can join us on uh, Facebook Live or on Instagram Live there. But that's a space where I'm trying to have us meaningfully connected to God in that moment. But we are called in an environment that is marked by tremendous anxiety to be meaningfully connected to God. And I want you to hear this as an invitation. God is calling your name. God wants you to slow down to be with him. God wants you to spend some time in silence and in prayer and in journaling, offering what's on your heart to the living God. And until the disaster has passed, we are called to be meaningfully connected to God. That's the first invitation. But there's two other invitations I want to give you as well. It's not just being meaningfully connected to God. It's also being meaningfully connected with ourselves. To ourselves. That we would cultivate a meaningful connection with ourselves. It's in these moments where we can often fail to take inventory of what's happening beneath the surface of our souls. So inundated with things out there that we can fail to see what's happening in here. And I want to tell you, if you've been part of our congregation, we are prepared for this moment. God has trained us, informed us for this moment. We are a people that have been talking for many years about remaining meaningfully connected to ourselves. And in a world that's marked by panic and anxiety and being debilitated, we are trained for this moment, brothers and sisters, for this particular time. And so at New Life, throughout our years, we've introduced various tools to keep us meaningfully connected, not just to God, but to ourselves. And I want to remind you of one of the tools that we have at our disposal. It's called Explore the Iceberg. And this is a very simple elementary tool that you can use with your children, that you can use with people around you to access what's going on in our souls, not just so that we could identify it, but that we can lift it up to the Lord. Four very simple questions. What are you mad about? There's a lot to be mad about. Lots of us are angry at what's happening in the world. And instead of stuffing that anger, why don't you begin to name it and lift it up to God? What are you mad about? What are you sad about? What's causing you great grief and sadness? I've been taking inventory of my own heart this past week, and I've been naming my sadness, naming the, the gathering of the people of God that's not happening at this moment, and just lifting it up to God. Naming the restrictions that we find ourselves in and just lifting it up to God. But what are you sad about? What's causing 
you sorrow? Can you name it? What are you anxious about? That's the third question. What's causing you fear? Anxiety. What's keeping you up at night? And it is at these moments where very prayerfully we can name it. And I want to tell you, whatever you can't name has power over you. And until you're able to say, I'm afraid of this, you begin to release it from the power it has over you. And so begin to name your fears in the name of Jesus. And name your anxiety in the presence of God. And name whatever's happening inside of you, knowing that the Holy Spirit is with you. What are you anxious about? And then we, we take inventory of what's bringing us joy. What are you glad about? And in this moment, we could just so focused on everything that's wrong with the world and miss the gifts that are right before us. That there's much to be glad about. There's much to celebrate. And while we don't dismiss the anxieties and the sadness and replace it just with the gladness, we hold them together in dynamic tension with each other. But what are you glad about? We want to stay meaningfully connected to ourselves. And I want to invite you to practice this throughout the course of this week. But there's a third invitation, not just to be meaningfully connected to God, meaningfully connected to ourselves, but also meaningfully connected with others and to others. It's in this moment where we're scattered all around this city. And for those of you watching, you're scattered all around this country and around the globe. We're isolated and distanced from one another. And yet, just because we are isolated and distanced doesn't mean we cannot still experience community. It's in this moment where I want to invite you to be intentional about connecting with others. And at New Life, our community life team, led by Pastor Peter Roden and Pastor Helen, Pastor Sharon, the rest of our team, we're trying to create spaces where you can be meaningfully connected with others. And so if you've never joined a small group, I want to invite you to reach out to them because what a great opportunity to be connected in this space until the disaster has passed and beyond the disaster passing. Community is not just to get you through this moment. Community is for the rest of our lives. And we realize more than ever how much we need each other. And so we want to stay meaningfully connected to others. I want to invite you to make phone calls to talk to one another, to pray for each other, to find yourself in various Zoom meeting rooms and such. But we wanna be a people that's meaningfully connected to each other. We've identified in our church congregants who are a bit older in our church, those 65, 70 and older. And we wanna let you know we're praying for you. We've identified people who, have, who are working in uh, hospitals and medical personnel, and we want to let you know that as a staff, as a pastoral team, our deacons, our elders, we're praying for you. We've identified people in our congregation that are beginning to experience some economic challenges. And we want to let you know we're praying for you. And we're figuring out ways, how can we serve each other in the midst of this moment? We have a wonderful opportunity as the body of Christ, particularly at New Life Fellowship, to be meaningfully connected to each other to practice generosity and hospitality, even though we cannot let people inside of our homes, we still can offer hospitality because hospitality is not about opening your home. It's really about opening your heart. And we have an opportunity to do that in this moment. Parker Palmer, I was reading Parker Palmer this past week, a great Quaker theologian. And he said these words that really capture the moment we're in. And this is what he says. He says, solitude does not necessarily mean living apart from others. Rather, it means never living apart from oneself. It is not about the absence of other people. It is about being fully present to ourselves, whether or not we are with others. And then hear this word on community. Community does not necessarily mean living face to face with others. Rather, it means never losing the awareness that we are connected to each other. It is not about the presence of other people. It is about being fully open to the reality of relationship, whether or not we are alone. That's the invitation for us. To find refuge in God. To recognize that in this refuge, I can be connected to myself and offer refuge to others as well. I want to close with this 
one verse. Because as, as I thought about it, I thought, what a powerful verse for us. In verse 3, this is what David says. He says, God, he sends from heaven and saves me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. And when I read that verse this past week and meditated on it, I thought David wrote these words. And these words have found fulfillment in Jesus Christ. You see, God has already sent the vaccine. And that vaccine, as we wait for this current vaccine, there is a bigger vaccine. And that bigger vaccine has come in the person of Jesus Christ. The one who takes on our sin. The one who takes on our guilt. The one who dies in our place. All throughout the Bible, we see that God sends from heaven and saves us. This is what God does. This is what God did. And this is what God will do. And so we celebrate what Christ has done for us. And we recognize that God has sent the power of the Holy Spirit to be with us, to comfort us, to save us, to rescue us. Until we're able to say like David, be exalted, O God. Above the heavens, let your glory be over all the earth. And that's my prayer. And I pray that's your prayer. That in the midst of what's happening in the world, God would have his glory fill the entire earth. And that we would see it with our eyes. Lord, I will take refuge in you until the disaster has passed. And as the people of God, we hold on to God in the midst of the moment we're in, knowing that God is with us. Let's pray together. Right where you're at, I just want to invite you to take a deep breath in. Just breathe out. Every time you breathe in, you recognize the presence of God. And when you breathe out, breathe out all anxiety, fear, the ways that you've been debilitated. Breathe in, recognizing his presence. Breathe out all that's not of him. Lord, thank you for the gift of being together in this kind of space. And until the disaster has passed, until we're able to gather together as a people in close proximity to each other, Lord, may we find refuge in you. May we find ourselves meaningfully connected to you, to ourselves and to others. And so lead us, Holy Spirit. Guide us in the way we should go. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you watching, I usually end with a benediction, a time where I'm able to bless you. And uh, after I give a blessing, Pastor Matt will come up and we'll uh, close our service. But right where you're at, whether your kitchen, whether your dining room, your living room, your bedroom, maybe you're parked and you're watching this. I hope you're not driving and watching this. But wherever you're at, I want to invite you to open your hands towards heaven. At New Life, we end every service like this. This is a sign of receiving blessing. And we cannot give what we have not received. And so right where you're watching, I want to bless you. I want to bless you in the name of Jesus. And may God give you everything you need in this moment. And so with your hands and your hearts in a posture of receiving, brothers and sisters and sons and daughters of the living God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and fill you with peace. And may you walk out from this online moment in the power of the Holy Spirit, knowing that you can find refuge in the shadow of God's wings. 
And may you find yourself connected to God this week, connected to yourself and connected to others. Until the disaster has passed, may we find refuge in God. I bless you all in the strong, in the beautiful, in the ever-present name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. Grace and peace to you all. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for this week's online worship experience. Our hope and our prayer is that you stay safe out there. Please stay at home as often as you possibly can. Wash your hands and all that other good stuff. Like I said, we're going to do our best to be here for you on Sundays to live stream. And in the event that our stream fails, you can come back later on in the day. This will be recorded and posted on our website for you to enjoy and share. Share with somebody you know. This is a great moment, a great opportunity to invite somebody to church right in, their, in the comfort of their own home. We love you guys. We hope to see you again soon. God bless.